Hey everyone, it's been too long. So I'd like to take you guys along on a short astrophotography trip to the plains of Illinois. For this outing, I'm trying something new, the astrophotography specific Canon EOS RA. Long story short, the Canon EOS RA looks like a normal camera, but it has a different type of filter inside that allows more infrared light to hit the sensor, and this one small change should make improvements in how well it captures certain types of celestial objects that emit a specific wavelength of light called hydrogen alpha, or H-alpha. So it's just a little bit, a uh, little bit before sunset right now. So we're kind of just walking around the uh, wildlife area to try and find a couple compositions. Um, this area is pretty cool. There's nobody here right now. Um, it's right next to like a big wind farm. So we have like tons of windmills and stuff over that direction towards the sunset. It's going to be probably another hour before it gets dark, but we'll probably be shooting in this direction behind me initially. So Stellarium saying that uh, Orion should be roughly perpendicular to the road that we're standing on, so shooting over the, uh, the frozen water should give us a pretty good composition of Orion. And then uh, Orion will sort of like traverse across the sky to the south um, this direction. The forecast says it's supposed to be partly cloudy. It's actually currently like almost completely clear right now, but there's some like clouds moving in and out, so we'll see what that's like. Hopefully it stays relatively clear for our night. Um, it's already pretty cold, and uh, especially with like the water and stuff here, I think it might get even colder. Hopefully we won't, won't have any issues being too cold. Uh, hopefully it's dark enough to get some nebulosity and stuff. We brought some light pollution filters, and uh, that might help a little bit because we are gonna be shooting kind of over uh, some small towns and stuff. So I'm sure there's gonna be a little bit of light pollution here, but it should be pretty fun. I'm glad that we found this area. It's only about two hours outside of Chicago. It's pretty cool. I like those trees over there. So for tonight, I only have one lens that I'm using. It's the 50 millimeter uh, 1.2 which should be pretty nice for shooting Orion. It's a little bit narrower than I typically use, but I plan to shoot Orion, get like a good stack of Orion, um, and then also maybe do a fairly small panorama, multi-row panorama, so that I can get more of the foreground in there. And I think that should work really, really well for making some astrophotos tonight. Um, I really enjoy doing that, like doing the multi-row panoramas, um, just for that extra resolution and also for some noise improvement. The light's just starting to go away, the sun's kind of dipping down below some trees, and uh, it'll start getting dark here soon. Pretty excited. Super glad that we found this spot outside of Chicago. Um, I think it'll be pretty good. As the last glimpse of sun dipped below the horizon, we headed back to the comfort of the car for a much needed break from the cold. While we waited for the stars to come out, we spent a little time reviewing our sunset photos and preparing our gear for the night. So along with the EOS RA, I also have my old Sony a7S. So I'm going to compare these cameras and basically just think about like how they're used at night, how well they perform in terms of like live view and focusing. On this camera I've got the 55mm 1.8 and um, this obviously has the 51.2. So they're relatively similar focal lengths. Um, but you can really see like size difference wise, like the 1.2 is significantly bigger. Um, hopefully that'll uh, give us some better uh, image quality just because I'll be able to stop down the lens a little bit more, kind of reduce some of the vignetting. But it'll be interesting to see um, if there really is a big advantage of having this larger lens uh, for shooting at night. It's almost fully dark now, so we'll probably go out in just a few minutes and see what we can get.
Now I'm coming back to a Canon body after a fairly long hiatus of just using Sony cameras for the last few years, and using the EOS RA is just refreshing. Its button layout is tactile, and it's easy to operate with winter gloves on, and like my Sony cameras, it has a refreshingly bright live view feed that makes it really easy to see in the dark. That, combined with the ability to use a 30x magnification, makes focusing on stars exceptionally easy, especially with the use of our Sharp Star 2 focusing tool. Canon's touch interface has been clearly refined over many years, and it's good enough to the point that I actually found myself using the touchscreen over most of the physical buttons for pretty much every feature on the camera, even actuating the shutter. Now, this is what my first astro shot made on the EOS RA looked like straight out of the camera. When I compared this unedited RAW with one from my Sony a7S, it's not initially apparent if the EOS RA was really showing a better result when compared with a normal camera, particularly in the light polluted conditions that we were shooting in outside of Chicago. But once a bunch of these exposures are stacked together in software and edited, the differences between these two cameras becomes much more apparent. H-Alpha for the win. Compared with the Sony a7S, the Canon EOS RA's extra infrared sensitivity allowed it to much more easily capture the hydrogen alpha light emitted by the nebulae around the constellation Orion, even in some really difficult shooting conditions. While the Green River wildlife area was pretty dark, there was still a fairly strong amount of light pollution on the horizon, no matter which direction that we faced. So in order to get the most out of the night, I decided to shoot multiple exposure stacks for pretty much every composition that I made. Everything here was shot on my regular tripod with either a ball head or a panorama head, and no use of a star tracker. Here's the North America Nebula shot on the Canon EOS RA. This one's a stack of 58 separate exposures, and you can really see how the Canon EOS RA's extra hydrogen alpha sensitivity brings out the deep reds of the nebulosity in the plane of the Milky Way. And while this targets less of a showcase of the RA's H-alpha capability, here's a 19-shot stack of our neighboring galaxy Andromeda next to the plane of our Milky Way. Now, if you remember my original plan for the night, I really wanted to shoot a wide-angle, multi-row panorama that included the constellation Orion, so for the last shot of the night, we moved a little bit down the road to set up a new composition. Can I just reiterate again just how good the EOS RA's live view feed is at night? Especially with a 50mm 1.2 mounted on the RA, even extremely dark shadowy areas were visible on the LCD, and there are absolutely no problems with figuring out what you're composing on this camera. Anyways, back to shooting. I ended up making a much larger panorama than I had originally planned. My panorama ended up being 9 rows and 5 columns with a 50mm which ended up being a field of view of about 126 degrees or about the equivalent of shooting on an 11 millimeter lens. In this final composition of the night, you can see the outer arm of the Milky Way galactic plane painted with strokes of red nebulae in the Orion molecular cloud complex, glowing orange stars like Betelgeuse and Aldebaran, and the wispy blues of the Pleiades. So with some strange noises coming from the marsh, problems with condensation on our filters, and just the fact that it got too damn cold, we decided to pack it up and call it a night. I've never been a brand loyalist when it comes to photography. Even though I've personally been using Sony cameras over the last few years, I've spent time shooting on all the major brands over the last two decades, and I've owned multiple cameras from Canon, Panasonic, Fujifilm, Olympus, and Sony. Shooting with the Canon EOS RA and seeing Canon's latest offerings with the new R5 and R6 cameras has gotten me excited to see how their mirrorless lineup develops in the next couple of years, and I'm seriously contemplating the change of systems because of this experience. Thanks so much for joining us on this cold night of shooting the winter night sky here in Illinois. 
Check out our full review of the Canon EOS RA and all of our other astrophotography gear reviews, tutorials, and inspiration on LonelySpec.com. Clear skies. <laughs>